okay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Power. I give it to him. The glory. I give it to him. Forever. I give it to him. And ever. I give it to him. Hey everybody, welcome. This is the Bold and the Beautiful. We are here right now. We are getting ready to start our broadcast. And I'm Curtis Austin, and we are now on the When Christian Speak Talk Radio. We air every second Saturday of the month at 10 a.m. Won't you just tune in? Welcome to When Christians Talk Radio, Bold and the Beautiful. If it wasn't for God, I'd be weak. I wouldn't wake up from my sleep. I wouldn't have nothing to eat. I wouldn't be so unique. If it wasn't for God, I would lose it. I wouldn't live under a roof. Yeah. I wouldn't be up in this booth, fam. Yeah. I wouldn't know he is the truth, fam. If it wasn't for God, I would have been bold. The enemy would have taken my soul. But now I rise up and I surprise up at the day that he rose. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be up in these four cars on the way to my shows. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't have nada. I wouldn't be cold. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't have clothes. No shoes to cover my toes. No hat to cover my head. If it wasn't for God, I would have been. If it wasn't for God, Bold and Beautiful is a talk show designed to bring the word of God to youth and young adults around the world and embolden them to live out loud for Jesus. Our vision is to see young people of the world rising up to take their rightful place as leaders and world changers. I'm a young girl spitting that gospel. Last time I saw the God, he said, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 And they try to act like they never knew you. But the devil can't do nothing to you. He's the power. I give it to him. The glory. I give it to him. Forever. I give it to him. And ever. I give it to him. The power. I give it to him. The glory. I give it to him. Well, hello, here we are again with another When Christians Speak Talk Radio Bold and Beautiful podcast. I'm here, of course, with my wonderful co-host and a special guest. So, of course, we have uh, Rem Curtis over here. Say what's up. What's up, what's up, family? We have Reverend Novena, my sister. And we have uh, a special guest, uh, Brother Dion Wilkerson. Um, who we are excited. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Um, so we're excited to get into it. This is a young man, 21 years old, right? Yes. 21 years old, um, on fire. Um, God has called him out, called him in, and is raising him <laughs> up. So we are excited um, to get into what has happened in his life, how God is showing up, and um, what, what he's moving in right now. Um, so I think I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll um, start it off. So Dion, um, you know, we had this little pre-chat before we actually started recording. So I asked a couple <laughs> questions I've asked before. Don't worry about it. But uh -huh. um, you, are, you are new to the faith. And so, you know, I always love hearing people's Jesus stories. Yeah. Like how, they, how they connected with God, what it looked like, what it felt like, what it sounded and smelled like. You know, whatever that experience was for you, what? How did it happen? How did it occur? Um. So, it was like it's like now that I know God. Like, so for for people, like you, you have to know, or you will like experience God through an experience. And so it's like I was like raised in a family that went to church, um, grew up in the Baptist church, transferred and to a Baptist church. And then when um, I was growing up, I just always wanted to be that drummer, be the drummer, be the drummer. And then I was going to Bright Light Baptist Church, where it's, it's located in Tacoma Park, Maryland. And then 2011, um, I was going with my grandmother, which she goes to Peace Baptist Church right there, um, Boston, D.C., Benton Road. And then I became a youth drummer there. 
and then I was playing for the different choirs as like subbings and everything as uh, another person was the main drummer. And then I just, God just dawned down on me. And then he was saying that um, you and my son, and then you and my son of integrity, and I would like you to speak to the world and the nation. So then that's when I just knew that it was, it was just something. I'm like, hold on, I'm just hearing this voice. I'm just hearing this voice. Okay. And then I learned that a big voice and like through the spirit, like that's, that is God speaking. And then so like, I was like wondering, like, like, what is this and what's going on? And then through like me getting saved and everything, it helped me to realize like God is real. Um, church is real, spiritual warfare is real. Everything is real. So that's what opened my eyes and make me realize like, yeah, this thing is real and you have to carry out the God has for you and having the faith and everything to do what he has called you to do. Mm-hmm. That's, that's very interesting. Um, how has your life changed since uh, you came into relationship with Christ? Um, it, it got personal because it's like um, we know we know God as as God, but it's like once you get that real close relationship with God, it's like um, if you're a male, it's a father and son thing, or if you're a female, it'd be like a dad and daughter thing. So it's like having that close relationship is like you can speak to him; he will speak back to you, mm-hmm. like tell you dreams, and use like other ministers to speak to you of what he had to deliver to you and everything. So it's like. Just having that bonding relationship and just talking to him daily it, um, is, just, is, is, a, is a big connection and a part of like life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this. So I, at, at, I know what it was like for me at 22 and save, like, because um, I had done so much stuff. Um, at least I thought I did. I did so much stuff. Um, so I felt like, you know, once he saved me, because I was in, I was at my lowest point at that moment anyway. So right. Once he picked me up, it was like, okay, boom. I'm like, oh, I'm, going I'm like, all in, Lord, you know. Um, and it was, it was, it wasn't hard for me to be 22 and saved. One because, um, well, I can't even say that because it wasn't hard for me to be 22 and saved. Um, not because I, of my environment or nothing like that. You would think it was, but it was like. Man, once he saved me, my eyes though, my heart was changed. It was mm-hmm. like, like I was so excited because I know mm-hmm. I didn't deserve it, right? So it wasn't hard for me to just allow him to shape me the way he desired me to shape me and not where I was at and what I was going through, right? Um, but 22, I mean, 21, um, still out here. Uh, and because you know my story just like I know you, it was 21, you know? Mm-hmm. Tell me, like, like, what does 21 and save really look like? You know what I mean? Like, Cause I know it's all types of pressure and I know most of the people that's probably around you is really not, I mean, well, I can't say that. I don't know. So I'm asking, do you have a lot of people around you that might want to say, okay, well, I want to be like you. or I want to go the direction. I want to make that choice you made or, or nah, why are you doing that? Dion? I mean, that's crazy. We, we, let's turn it up, man. Let's go. Let's do that. You know, tell me about life, life struggles as a 21 <laughs> Christian integrity man. Yeah. And so, and, and it's like, it's crazy because, all that that you just said and lead it up to this. So like I'm a I'm the type of person where um I'm selfless. So meaning selfless, like you put everybody before you. And so like I'm the light of some people. And so yeah, I have impressions of how you do this or why is this happening. And then I just gotta explain to them like one thing is is a part of life and one another thing is ministry. And so it's like separating those two and explaining it to them. I just explained it to them like, okay, this ministry thing, okay, you had to have faith about things. And then in life, you got to have faith about things too. So it's like, I have to get into recognition of explaining it where I don't contradict myself, but explaining it to where they can understand by me having to understand it so I can release it to them. So, uh, all right. So now, so they ask questions. You and you explain it. But what pressures have you experienced, though, as a twenty-one-year-old man that's saved? 
Like, have have you have been in situations where where girls wanted you to be something that you that you not no more? Has, has it been like your friends that you used to walk with now separated from you because you're not walking like they used to, or they still mm-hmm. or they want to walk like you? I mean, mm-hmm. and, you know, like what's the pressures of it? Because I, I want you to kind of you know share with us, really like be transparent about you know how it is to be saved and young, because there's a lot of people out there that probably want to make that choice, but they don't have the confidence enough to say, I'm gonna step out of my crowd and then I'm allowing myself to be seen by Jesus and then him invite me to a place where I can help the crowd. Cause I mean, so many people get lost in the crowd and I I, I yeah. from the story of um, um, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, mm-hmm. he, he had to run away from the crowd then climb up in the tree and then the Lord saw him, you know what I'm saying? But he, so many people get lost in the crowd, right? And um, and never get a chance to really say, I know who I am because Christ chose me, you know what I'm saying? So tell me about your, like, you know, what it is to, that you're not okay. a part of the crowd, you know? Um, And to continue on what you were saying, and another thing, I had to figure out, like, who I was because at a point in time, like, growing up, you could become the boy who you, from boy to man or young lady to man, but really honestly, you have to know who you are so you can carry yourself out to be the person who you want to be. And then it's like with the ministry thing, it's like um, now it's like you have to surround yourself with those who are eager to do good and it's doing what's right because of it's times where people could be doing something, they could pull you into something that you don't want to do or was just not right. And then, but the, and the thing is, with people now today, and I hear them when they speak, they do wrong and they do right. And by me speaking to them, that pull them to be like, hey, oh, okay, I want to talk to you. I want to, I want to do right. So what is there to do right? And I give them the guidance and the help that is needed. But it's, it's like, I got to a point where I had to realize, okay, if I'm doing this for God, it got to be right. It got to be 100% right. And then I can't let nothing like distract me or bother me or pull me away from what I got to do because I know that either fall in the trap and be all messed up or do what's right and be on the, the, the straight path and everything and to just do what's right. Okay. So first of all, I just want to say, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sound real old, even though I look real old, <laughs> okay. I'm a sound real old because it, I think it's so, I don't want to say adorable, but like really adorable because, because we can see that you're growing in your faith. Right. So for us, who have been walking a couple decades with God. It's, you know, you don't, you don't often like come across like, you know, like new Christians, right? Like people who mm-hmm. are exploring their faith and seeing how big God is and seeing where God is taking them. So this is a refreshing conversation. One, mm-hmm. us to talk to you and to talk to you in, in the place where you are, where you're still like discovering, you know, God's voice and discovering how he's leading you and how he's going to show up in your life, right? Because how he shows up in your life is going to be different than how he speaks to me and how he speaks to Curtis and Novena. And mm-hmm. so for you, um, is it mostly, is it when he, when he talks to you and how you're hearing, hearing his voice, is it mostly like a dad? Is it mostly like, you know, I'm coming to you as a father or does it sometimes he's coming to you um, like a friend? Because sometimes, let me just tell you how Jesus talks to me sometimes. He talks to me in slang, like, <laughs> like, like, we're, like we're BFS. He's like, girl, I don't know what this uh-huh. is, but you know what I mean? So I'm wondering how, what does his voice sound like to you? Like, right um, So sometimes it's like, it's, it's calm. And then, um, and then sometimes it's like through dreams. And then other times it's like through like ministers as like, um, like um, as Curtis, like he would like speak encouragement or prayer. And that's like confirmation of what I needed to hear from God and stuff like that and um do you have a specific dream that you can that you can recall where he spoke to you um oh no i can um i can say the time where he spoke to me so i i used to work a job um at security and so it would be at the chipotle's and then um, he just spoke to me and then I just got so joyful and then so like that's calm joyful type thing as you like you saying speaking as a friend 
And then he was just giving me promises. And so like through that, that's like a, a, um, a open eye dream type type of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What were the promises? Um, basically like I would be granted um, things for the future with he had set for me, the things that he, he has set for me in the future where I can't see it now, now. I can't get there now because of uh, playing the role of faith. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so things things that are being prepared for you. So when you yeah. get there, it's gonna be it's gonna be there ready for you. Yeah. Okay. Amen. 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 So let me ask you this then. Um. So tell me about the now generation. You know. Um. Yeah. Share that with me about the now generation. Like what what is the now generation? Okay. So um. Like what I what I discovered and what I've been thinking. So like what God is doing, he's raising up a now generation. So say for, say for instance, myself, like I grew up in a church where um, I like went to Bible study and was very committed to like doing Sunday school before I went to go play drums or do whatever, whatever, I mean, excuse me, whatever else I had to do like in the church. And so what God is doing right now, so by, us being his children and the children that uh, older people are having, they're becoming like ministers and, and chosen vessels for the kingdom. And so what is he doing is what he have to do is work through the church or work through like a person who can preach, teach and um, teach the children so they be able to speak out for themselves. Yeah, and then, so it's like, Basically, God is like raising up like sons to be prophets and 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 young um, ladies to be prophets, so they can be they can go and mount out and speak the word of God and and speak the truth of what has to come out in the church or what needs to be right and like correcting the wrong and everything like that. But it's 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 kind of it's kind of different because like coming from a a pandemic and then it's funny because God works in mysterious ways and then it's like everything he said like going into like acceleration so you got to get caught up or you have to do what you have to do like you have to get, if you have to finish biblical studies finish it if you got to finish theology finish it if you have to do finish school like like do it because it's some places where people like are backed up or they not above or set on schedule to where he wants you to be so that's that's my input on that amen amen I, I, and that last part i received uh, <laughs> I, you know i was dragging my feet with some stuff but now i'm not no more god is <laughs> opening up doors left and right so um, yeah. i thank god for that you know and mm -hmm. um i'm glad that you are here to tell us now what the lord mm -hmm. is saying <laughs> amen. yeah you know, but but it's like but I, I put it like this. It's like before the pandemic, we was having church, everything, everybody having a Bible study and everybody was having their, like, their church service. And then we had a drought where we had a pandemic where some churches were open and some like some churches were um, where they had people at home and doing like Zoom services or WebEx and everything. And so I feel as though with the church, it should not be like, a continuous acceleration, but set a time to adjust and get order back before you move fast, because you have to be settled and have a objective or be in order before you just go and rush into doing things. So like taking your time and finding like that set gender or order will, 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 will really help and put account a to a lot of things. And that's that's what I believe to happen. Uh, did we lose you, Dion? Yeah. You still there? Dion? We might have lost him. I wonder maybe if his battery is low. Yeah. So we will keep going. So it 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 sounds like what God is doing, and I love this because, um, and he didn't give the year, but I think he said he got saved in 2019. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and so now we're just in 2021 and he's already been like called into ministry. And I love that. I love that there is a freedom to walk into what God is doing in your life. And you don't have to go get, you know, a, a, a theological degree in this or, you know what I mean? I think we're in a place now where um, if, if God is, is moving on your heart to do something, that it may not look as it, as it has in times past, like in the traditional sense and how we mm -hmm. use things and how we used to move out into ministry, right? Like you have to sit under somebody's ministry for this many years and then be groomed up in, in their ministry before you're released to go do something else. I think it's beautiful that young people feel the freedom to hear his voice and just go. I guess that's <laughs> considered the now generation. Right, right. And I think that's beautiful. And I think that is, I think that's what's needed because, you know, some of us old fuddy duddies, they're like, listen, I'm not trying to hear what you're selling. But someone like Dion, right, who's just like, listen, I was just sitting there and he spoke to me and he said it and I did it. And this is what's happening. And you know what I mean? And so they can hear from someone in their own voice who's one of their peers. And, and that message looks very different. It sounds very different when it, when it um, is coming from, um, someone who has like walked the same path and who is in the same generation. Mm -hmm. Can you get a response from him? Did you say something? Okay. Well, we'll, we'll wait. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I definitely believe that God is raising up um, a remnant, you know, um, cause you know, even when I, when I, when I listen to him and he speaks and he talks about like a now generation that he feels that God is doing that and God, and I really, you know, that's something that, you know, has been placed in his spirit, you know, that's mm -hmm. something that he's speaking from, you know, what's in his spirit and what's in his heart and what he believes. And, and he's a, he, he, he has stepped forth as evidence of that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know how, when it, cause I, I don't know if y'all remember, but like right when the pandemic hit that, uh, it was a lot of giants, um, in the faith, uh, that had passed away right around the time when the pandemic hit, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, sometimes you wonder, like, okay, now uh, it's about raising up people to take those, that, those places, those places, those, those, those people were in, and not just the people that were, that were, that's also in their ministry, but mm -hmm. also, too, like, people that is in obscurity right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, someone like how David was, David wasn't like somebody that was in the inner circle of his brother, even in his own household. Right. Mm -hmm. They called him when it was time for the feast. Well, they didn't nobody call him checking for David. <laughs> yeah, wasn't nobody checking for him. The youngest, the the one that they feel. And then you even look at over in um in chapter seventeen of First Samuel when he was questioning, you know, what shall happen? Whoever defeats Goliath and his brother, mm -hmm. the old brother Eli, said, "I know your mischief. What are you mm -hmm. doing now? You know." Mm -hmm. So so he obviously was like, you know, maybe a jokester, maybe he liked the. The, the play around and sometimes they might have seen that might have felt that he was not not as responsible as he should have been um but yeah david had experiences with god that it, couldn't nobody take away from him, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and the, the thing where i am now is um i'm in this leadership development training and the main thing is making disciples and that's what I'm thinking he's he's going to be doing is making disciples right. um, for his generation. Right. The, the, um, he grew up in the church, so he's been to the Bible studies. He, he, he knows the voice of God. He's like he said, it's a difference from just going to church right. Right. and actually being saved and hearing the voice of God and doing what he says to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what I think I'm going to follow up with him and is, you know, who's following him. You know, how does his ministry look? Um, he says it's like evangelistic, but how does it really look? Right. And who's, who's following him? Who is he discipling? Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dion, you back Dion with back? us? All right. Hello. Hello. Yeah. We got you back. Okay, yeah. my bad. Um, I, had, I had technical difficulties. It, it clicked on. <laughs> I understand about the technical difficulties. Then happens um, to the best of us. I was on a meeting today and they were like, what's happening? <laughs> Somebody's yeah. on hold. We can't get them to talk. So listen, it happens okay. to the best of us. Yeah. But you're back. Okay, to um to return. Okay. To return back to what I was saying. So like so so what God wants to do, he he wants to he wants to speed up the process. But I I would say like coming from a pandemic and stuff and like with the churches, like 
coming to a meeting or having like a set order and agenda of going back to the normal will like take time and it will be a process. So like with the with the acceleration, taking the time to to okay, what's this? What do we have? And what do we have to recuperate with or what do we have to get back in the agenda? So I think with the celebration, it's 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 gonna be time or process with it. Say it one more time. I'm sorry, the last part. Okay, so with like moving fast and like God speeding up everything, I think with that acceleration, it will need time and process. Oh, yeah. Have a right time in the process, like in set agenda and like things set in order to to be correct and be right. Amen. No, Vinny, yeah. well, Vinny had, had brought up something too, and um, okay. uh, she, you 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 want to ask that question, Novena? Yes, I know um, one of the greatest commandments, the main commandment that um, God commanded us or well, commanded Jesus to do is you know, make disciples. And I'm wondering um, more about your ministry. And I know you said it's more evangelistic. And um, I just wanted to hear more about your ministry and, and your calling and um, just who are you? Are you making disciples? Um. So. With the um the ministry, uh, actually, it's something I got to go more and pray and um detail about before the New Year's and everything. So I know he graced he graced me with the ministry and like to to speak out and I guess prophesy and everything to um people, but. Like, like I was saying, I have to go into a deep prayer so I can get the de details before New Year's and before January 10th of next year. But like, now if someone calls me or book me, I will be able to do the speaking engagement or to preach a sermon because that's what he graced me with to, um, to be able to speak out and do what to say of the Lord, so. Say yeah. do what Jesus did. <laughs> yeah, go out, out. That's him, man. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So the people that you're interacting with now, you mentioned earlier about how, you know, you're giving them advice about, you know, how to, mm -hmm. are those people who are like already in your life or like, are you already going up to like people that you may not know or, or are these are just people who are already in your circle? Uh, these these are people um, that are already in my circle okay. and everything. And then some to add on to that, I see now in the world today, like I can wear a shirt that say God is dope. And then so I just wore that recently and I came back from working and I was talking to this lady on the train. And then before I got off the train and then she said, I like this shirt. And then she said, I'm a believer that will call my attention because I bring light to the people where, mm -hmm. okay, you saw my shirt, I'm speaking to you, I believe in Christ. So that's that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And then so, and like with my ministry and things, my favorite Bible verse is Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. And so like my main goal will be to get people to know who Christ is and the non-believers to get to know who Christ is. So, Mm. That's that would be one of my main goals, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. and to to be an encouragement for the people. As when I go out and do like speaking engagements, or if I have to speak, or if I'm like doing an outreach type thing, yeah, to do that. It sounds like you're shining. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you. He said, "Go out, let your light shine, draw others to me." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just that's it. Yeah, definitely, you um, you you're definitely on track. You are definitely on track, mm -hmm. and you gotta say by January tenth next year, you wanna you know you know really be in in prayer about how God is gonna lead you next year, mm -hmm. uh, and and your ministry, and um, I, you know a lot of times too, it'd be amazing how God prepares us prior to that we realize don't even realize how they even your job could could be instances on your job that is really preparing you for what God is going to allow you to do in ministry later on. So it's amazing, mm -hmm. you know, how, 
how God prepares us. Do you see um, particular places like that, like your workplace, your home place, your your friendships? Do you see mm -hmm. how God is like preparing you for uh, the ministry that He's showing you? Yeah, because I I noticed like to be on the serious side. Um, okay, you have people, <laughs> but you have different type of people too. So. I have I have the great discernment to see and God will show me who the people to hang around and who the people not because you got the crowd that will be there and be having encouraging you and you have the you have the people that's there and um doing the wrong things but can see that you're doing good and want to tag along. But the thing is I put in my mindset to be the leader and not the follower because it's got too many people that will be followers of people seeing the right view but doing the wrong things or the wrong view doing right things. So I just keep conscious of that as well. Yeah, I think you brought up something really important um, in that there will be people who try and attach themselves to you who don't have the right motivation. They just see you winning. So they just want to like tag along because they don't actually want to change anything about their life. And I mm -hmm. think that is, that's an awesome lesson to learn, like especially even like younger, because some folks, like even when you think about people who are building their ministries and doing things and people yeah. say that they want to ride with you and they want to, you know, be with you on this journey, but their motivations mm -hmm. are correct. So, I mean, it really is important, especially when you think about building a ministry that you're surrounding yourself with people who are going to not only um, support you, but they also have the same heart and mindset towards the things of God. And they aren't, you know, still not, not in the background trying to do something that is completely against your own value system, right? Yeah. And um, I mean, that takes, you know, that takes some people like a, 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 some hard lessons to learn before they see yeah. that somebody who tags along is really for them. So mm -hmm. that, that's an excellent lesson that you've already learned. That's going to be like important to move you forward. Um, have you have you already have you done any speaking engagements yet, or is it that's is, is that just on the horizon? Um, yeah, that's that's on the horizon, and okay. then um, but over the summer when um, so I went to my main church, and then I went to a different church, and then it was led to me to speak to someone personally and then go out and this um, reiterate that I um, got saved and I'm called to speak to the youth and everything. And then with this, that he shaped the atmosphere where it was joy and light for me. So it's like, it's, it's on a, a rising coming up. Okay. Yeah. So what would you tell somebody um, uh, that's 21 years old right now? Um, that's like in that place where they know they want something different, but they just just don't know how to do it. And then also too, that it's like kind of like I mean, they feel like you know I, I just just want I want different, but I don't know where that different is and and how to take that step to make that difference. Um, so what would you tell them? Speaking okay. from your perspective. And so what I learned, what I learned. Um, I would tell them to pray and inform them who God is and they would like, tell them like they would be comfortable with speaking with God, but it's not going to always be your way or what you want it to be because the speaking is, is very different. And then I would just talk to them about like, where they is and try to help them to, to achieve like as if I want to achieve and I want that same encouragement. Basically like pour out with um, someone has imparted into me. Amen, 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 amen. Well, I'm gonna tell you like this, you know, I'm quite sure that that God is gonna use you mightily uh, as you continue to just be in his face. He's gonna give you more and more. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it is like, like uh, Joy said, it's refreshing to see, you know, you coming into who God has called you to be. And that you're constantly evolving into that, 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 because I mean, it's a, it, it's amazing, you know, because truthfully, it's a lot of things that could pull you in different directions, but you, mm -hmm. you, you set out your own mouth, you have determined and made up your mind that I'm not going to let nothing deter, distract me, derail me, or, or, or keep me from being and doing everything God called me to be. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a beautiful thing. 
I also too know something, one more thing, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, um, that uh that you also have a friend, um, and you all have a you have a girlfriend, right? And uh mm-hmm. she said she said you too. So yeah. you know, how is that y'all are going together? How is that like love in Christ and young? Young in Christ and love. <laughs> um so Oh, he will be. Least, I feel like he's blushing under all that. Yeah, he's blushing right there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, well, basically, basically, I met I met the girl in my dreams, and I love her dearly. And as we have to love God's people, I love her. I love her family. I love my family. I actually, if I'm called to speak to the world and nation, I love everybody in the world. So, and um, so with this thing. Um, it's been a journey because it's like she really honestly helped me because she was this call at the age of seven and she received everything at the age of seven. So what I was unsure about, she made sure, Dion, go pray, go, go, go pray, honestly, go pray. And so that that helped me on my road to to get where I am now. And it's like, it's, it's crazy because you you pulled into this direction because she said that um when she prayed the New Year's of uh, 2019 to bring someone in her life is was to bring her to help her with her ministry and by she doing the works that she do she speak out she do the the liturgical dance and she's a prayer warrior and so she said that um she was praying to ask and for somebody to come in her, her life to help with the Duna ministry. And then that's when we got together. And January 17, uh, 2022, we'll be coming up on three years. And so, yeah, and that's that's just how that worked. And like, and I'm, and I'm trying to tell you, from, Jan- <laughs> from January 2019 to now, it's been straight, it's, it's been straight church. I, I can't, I can't get church, uh, I can't get church out of me because all her, cousins and, and 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 uncles are bishops and elders and ministers and all that so it's like I was I was pulled into this thing as I received my calling to help develop it and develop me so yeah it's, it's, it's just little baby but I, I say we just all God's um, chosen vessels and, and kingdom kids basically yeah, so that's I think that is again, it's just adorable. <laughs> I just, I love it. And but I love how how specific God is because he probably connected you to this young woman and to her family because that is another added level of support on your journey. So mm-hmm. it's not like you have to go into this thing on your own without like a support so you have a whole spiritual network like already Mm -hmm. set up and so while you are growing on this journey you have all these people around you who have some like who have some wisdom and have some experience even even it sounds like your your partner that she has has been walking with God and and Mm -hmm. and that when you are questioning or wondering which way to go she just directs you back to Jesus like Mm -hmm. all right back to Jesus now (laughs) Yeah. Don't your knees and we'll talk. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to answer all these questions about like, how you get to use this, how you get to do this. Be out. Go pray. You'll get the answer. <laughs> <laughs> then, that's a wise young that. woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's awesome. That, hey, hey, look, and I'm going to tell you like this from a man's stance. Ain't mm-hmm. nothing like a praying woman. I'm telling you like that. Ain't I, I nothing know. like a praying woman. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, indeed. I need to, um, you know, uh, God is amazing. Like, um, so when I was waiting, I w- it was still in the process of me being delivered from prison. And mm-hmm. um, God had told me, to be a quick story, God had told me um, the judge had an opportunity to make the right decision at the time because my case was in his hands again. Um, mm-hmm. This was the second time around that God had given the opportunity to make the right choice where he wronged me in the first place. Yeah. Um, so God told me, uh, it was the week of my family's vacation. They all go to uh, Virginia Beach on this one week. Everybody goes, um, and I'm coming from work. And it's like after one something, right? And I'm like, you know, um, God says, uh, call your mother. 
Um, and, and I'm like, God, why are you going to say call my mother now? He said, call my mother, call your mother and tell her I said pray that the judge make the right decision. So I'm like, why are you telling me to call my mother now? I know they already gone. They, they already on the road. And at this time, wasn't, wasn't she didn't have a cell phone. Like everybody have a cell phone. Now I'm like, why you want me to call? Man, they ain't nobody else. So I'm, I'm going back and forth with him. He still say, call your mother. So I go on a day. Okay. He said he wanted, and she told me to tell my um tell her that she had to pray. He says, because I always hear the prayer of a mother. So whoever listening mm-hmm. to this, I don't know who that for, but it says she said, yeah. I always hear the prayer of a mother. So make yeah. a long story short, I call. I'm thinking they already gone. My aunt happened to answer the phone. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Aunt Faye, what are you doing there? Right. And she said, Well, your aunt, your uncle's aunt passed away. And we had to go to the funeral the next day, then we going down. So I told her what the Lord said and what the Lord told my told her to tell told me to tell my mother. They got mm-hmm. down that Tuesday night. My mother prayed. The judge didn't make the right set decision on Wednesday. On Thursday morning, the drug the judge dropped dead. Wow. Honest to God, the judge dropped dead. And mm-hmm. it was strategic by God because when the next time it was time my kids to come up in for the judge, he was out the way. And it was a brand new judge because God had gave me a promise years prior in 2004 that he was going to raise up a judge to deliver me. And he didn't just raise up one, he raised up two. But God is the voice of a woman and especially mothers too. Amen. So pray yeah. for me, ladies. Amen. Always. 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 That's right. <laughs> Always. Well, um, that's all I got. Christian walk and you're not going to be alone and um, it's not going to be very easy but you will get through it through prayer and the guidance of spiritual leaders and spiritual guidance and um, just live life because um, by living on this earth the sky's the limit so it's everything is done on earth so yeah that's all I have amen do I, my co-host, do you have any final thoughts? No, you just continue shining, Dion. You continue being that light. And as soon as you mentioned um, love and your partnership, your whole face just lit up, just lit up. So you just continue to shine. You continue uh-huh. to hold on to Christ and believe mm-hmm. that he's um, surrounding you with the people that um, you're going to grow with. Okay. Mm-hmm. Curtis? Well, I say, Dion, it was just a blessing to have you on, man. And may God bless your ministry. Bless everything you got coming your way because I know that you're going to be doing some awesome things now yeah. and in the future. So I just say to you, to Dion, the dynamic is mm-hmm. fire. On fire yeah. in the now generation. That's Dion, yeah. right? I just spelled that yeah. out. Yeah. All right now, come on now. All right now, I just spelled it out now because that's Dion. Yeah. Right. Right. Keep it up, bro. And then, and then I, uh, and then like, like do prayer and everything. I just like I'm, I'm a very, like I think, like I think a lot, and I be critically thinking. And then I just be thinking like, it's so much in store for me because Jesus started his ministry at the age of thirty, and God gave me a revelation in in the ministry through eighteen and twenty one. So what you think there's going to be in the future? So man, I'm just excited. <laughs> Uh And we look forward to seeing that. So um, Mm -hmm. as we close out, I just want to say that we also want to say that we are here to support you. And um, even though this is just our first meeting, we have Mm -hmm. a heart for 
people who have a heart for Jesus. So if you at any point need our guidance, advice, mm -hmm. prayer, support in anything, we are here for you as, as a team because we love to um, see young people growing in the things of God. And so if we can ever do anything to assist you, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, and, and we'll be following up. So, you know, once you start speaking, we'll have to have you come back on and, you know, give updates and everything. Maybe we can bring, bring your partner, your life, your future life partner with you. Maybe y'all yeah. can talk together. That would be fun. So yeah. we thank you for the time that you share with us. We are excited about all that God is going to do in your life and is already doing. And um, that concludes our show. So thank you all for tuning in to another When Christians Speak Talk Radio Bold and Beautiful podcast. And we out. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Have a good one. Thanks for tuning in to our broadcast. We look forward to introducing young talent and sharing exciting stories with our listeners around the world. So if you have a gift, talent, story, or information to share with us, spoken word, poetry, book, or song to share, if you're an entrepreneur or musician, please contact us at bnbwcstr2016 at gmail.com or on any of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram.